If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. We can go ahead and draw a picture of this simple pendulum. It's a pretty simple picture because, of course, it's a simple pendulum, which basically just consists of a point-like mass connected to a massless string that's just sort of oscillating back and forth indefinitely. And we are asked to calculate the length of the string in part A of the question. Now, we know that for a simple pendulum, the following equation holds true. In this equation, we have the period represented by t. Basically, the period is how long it would take for the pendulum to swing one way forward and then one way backward. That total time would be the period. And that's equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length of the string divided by the gravitational constant. We are asked to solve for L. And so maybe we could divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi. We could then square both sides of the equation so that we can get rid of the square root on the right hand side. Notice that when we square the 2 pi in the denominator, it becomes 4 pi squared. And then we can multiply both sides of the equation by g in order to isolate the length l. And then we could plug in the known values. Of course, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. The period t was given to us as being 2 seconds. So we can plug that in, and then we'll divide that by 4 pi squared. And this will give us the length of the string. And when you compute that, you should get approximately 0.993 meters, and that is the correct answer to part A. And it turns out that for part B, the, the length of the string is actually going to help us solve for the answer. And we're going to refer back to this picture right here. Now, the question in part B notes that the amplitude is 7 degrees, so that means that the pendulum would be pulled back by 7 degrees to its maximum position here, and then it would be released. And as it travels, it's going to move in a sort of circular fashion. It's going to come back over here, turn around, and then oscillate back to its original position. And it's just going to do that back and forth, back and forth. Why don't we go ahead and draw the length of the string along this equilibrium line right here? And since that's the full length of the string, we know that we could mark that L. And we could also mark this picture of the length of the string as L. And what we want to notice is that as the string moves from this equilibrium lower position back to its amplitude position, it rises up just a little bit. And in order to see that, why don't we draw a horizontal line? And by doing that, we can see again that the pendulum, as it swings from the equilibrium position up to its maximum amplitude, it sort of elevates just a little bit. In fact, its change in height is very small. It would be represented by this much right here. Now, the key to part B is that as the pendulum swings from this point up to here, it momentarily stops and acquires gravitational potential energy. And we know that gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass times g times the height that the object rises. So if we could find this little bit of height right here, then we can plug that height as well as g and the mass into this equation, and that would give us the total gravitational potential energy, and hence the total energy. Keep in mind that at this point, the only energy present is the gravitational potential energy, and so by finding it, we would, in fact, get the total energy. So again, our task becomes to find this little height right here. And to do that, we want to note that there's a nice right triangle here. Let's color it in. So there is the right triangle colored in blue. What we want to do is actually find the distance from here down to that horizontal line that we had drawn earlier. Now we can see that that distance, maybe we could just call it y, that distance is adjacent to the angle. And adjacent calls to mind the cosine function. We know that the cosine of an angle would be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse of this blue right triangle is marked as L. Now if we multiply both sides of this equation by L, we would be able to get an expression for that distance y that we've marked. L is simply the length of the string, which we know from part A of the question. And then the angle was given to us as 7 degrees. So we can go ahead and plug in and solve for y. And when you compute that, you should get roughly 0.9855 meters for that distance y. So let's think about this. Now that we have that distance marked as y, and we recall that our goal was to find this little distance right here, we're going to be able to find that little distance because we know that from here all the way down to there is the total length of the string, which we can mark as L. Well, hopefully it stands to reason that if we're trying to find that little length right there, we can take the length of the string and just subtract the distance y that we had just found. That's going to give us that height right there.
So perhaps we can write that the height that we're looking for is the length of the string minus y. We once again know the length of the string and y. And when we make that computation, we get about 0 0.007401, depending how you round it, meters. So that's going to be the height. It's a very small amount, but it's enough to cause the mass to acquire gravitational potential energy. So we can now go ahead and calculate that gravitational potential energy by plugging into m times g times h. For the mass m, just make sure you convert it into kilograms. So we'll have to use 0.1 kilograms. And we can see that the total energy or the gravitational potential energy at that point is going to be roughly 0 0.00725 joules. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Now on to part C. In order to calculate the speed of the pendulum when the mass is at the lowest point, what we have to recognize is that all of the gravitational potential energy that's present here is going to be converted into kinetic energy as the mass swings downward from its highest point to its lowest point. So at this point, all of the energy is kinetic energy. The mass is actually moving at its maximum speed right there. We know that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half times mass times speed squared. We'll take the potential energy that was present at this point and set that equal to the kinetic energy. That's basically an application of the conservation of energy. We can then multiply both sides of the equation by 2 and divide by the mass. And then finally take the square root of both sides so we can isolate V. We'll go ahead and fill in the known mass. And when we compute this, we get approximately 0.381 meters per second for the speed of the mass at its lowest point. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.